Good evening, one and all, and welcome to episode 280 of Love at First Send with me, Persilase, coming to you as always live on YouTube. Please do consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so, and if you would like to find out how you can support my work, you will find information about all of that in the video description below. That's out of the way. Who gets the first comment? Holly saying, afternoon, everybody. And Angela's there as well, saying hi, Persilase, and everybody. Hello to you as well. And Tina says, finally, after missing so many live broadcasts. You're all very welcome. Whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording, please feel free to leave a comment, ask a question. And for the benefit of those of you who are planning to tune in live, the plan for today is to do a brief-ish video on uh, these releases here, and then to take a two minute break and come back with a new release from Hermes, which is I think the, the one that maybe a lot of you are waiting for, because I hadn't trailed this one, I hadn't I hadn't said that I'd be talking about these. So I think we should get straight uh, get straight into it. I hope you're all well uh, and, and, and safe and healthy wherever you are. Uh, what is this? I have not seen uh, a great deal of writing or talk about these releases on the net. Um, um, oh, curious about the florals, says Rachel, the fig one and the rose one. Keep the comments coming, by the way. I'm keeping an eye on them here. So to, to put things in a little bit of context, um, I got these samples from Givenchy. These are the new-ish. I don't know if we can really call them new anymore. They're, these are the new-ish uh, exclusive scents from Givenchy. I got these samples a few months ago. And I kind of went through them and I smelt them and I thought, oh, I really must write about, write about them or do a video on them. And then, uh, as, as happens for you as well, time passed and other releases came my way. And I kept thinking, oh, I really must talk about them. And then just the other day, I got information that some, uh, at least one new one, perhaps more than one, would be added to the range. And I thought, oh, goodness me, I'd, I'd, I'd better talk about these. Because I think, I, I, I think, I think they are um, worth talking about, even though they're not going to be particularly earth shattering and there was another thing that prompted me to talk about them as well so one was that was this was this um, realization or this uh, the, this this news that i got that a new one was coming along but also another one tangentially another reason was that i talked about the uh, the dries van noten sense because i think there are some points of similarity between this exclusive collection and the Dries van Noten range. Uh, what are people saying? Uh, Prashant is saying good evening from India. Hello to you. Uh, hello there, dear sir, says Terracotta Kim. Hello from Texas, says Eric. Hello from Toronto, says, is it M Mika? Uh, Rich is here as well. Is this line inspired by a hotel, says Eric? Ooh, I don't know. I do have a, a longish press release. We may not have time to read it. Um, See, you've timed this with the end of the Premier League fixtures, says Stephen. <laughs> that was completely unplanned. <laughs> uh, Natalia's here as well saying hello. Um, and Claire is saying Manchester joining. Okay. And another little bit of context that we need to mention as well is that there was, of course, another um, exclusive range from Givenchy that stuck with us for a few years. You may remember them. I, I can't remember what 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 overall umbrella name that collection had, but they were the ones that uh, their, their caps were like spools of thread. Um, and in the UK, at least, they were exclusive to Harrods. Well, I believe those ones are now gone, and we have these in their place. <clears throat> so they are called the Collection Particulière, which I guess means the special collection, the um, the singular collection, the distinguished collection. And last time I checked in the UK, these ones were exclusive to Selfridges. And in this set, you've got the eight sort of proper perfumes, if you like. And then there's also something that they the Accord Particulière, because Apologies if you already know this, but one of the um, one of the the, the the marketing shticks behind this range is that you can wear each perfume on its own, or um, you could enhance it with this singular accord, with this accord particulier, or you can also wear the accord on its own. Now, um, I think I have to say straight off that that kind of thing doesn't particularly interest me. There's another brand that's just come out called Edenist or Edenist, uh, which is exclusive to Harrods. 
And they've also done this thing where you have the standalone perfumes, but then you can enhance them with certain mood boosters. Th that's fine if people are interested in that kind of thing. But but I think I think I I I approach the whole business of wearing a perfume in a in quite a fundamentally different sort of way. I want to have an olfactory chat with the perfumer. Um, I don't necessarily want to put a lot of myself into it by layering, etc. You know, absolutely fine if people do that. And I and I realize that I'm in a little bit of a geeky minority when I do that sort of thing. With um accords that in, in in case you're interested, that accord particuliere is basically a lot of ambroxan. It's a kind of rose ambroxan combo, and I, and, and I would imagine what it does to a lot of these was that it will make them appear to last longer. That's fine if people are interested in that kind of thing. Uh, Olfactive Story says, a court particulier was the most boring of the range for me. Yeah, I mean, to me, to me, that isn't a sort of standalone perfume. Uh, the Accord is just aromachemical boosters, right, says Rachel. I, th I think that is the idea. I think the private blends, says Wizzy, from Tom Ford were originally marketed as layering fragrances. They certainly had a moment, and I wrote about this on the blog, where they did a, 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 a layering recommendation <laughs> mika says layering is sacrilegious well a lot a lot of people do it but you know i i i i, I personally do, do, do not find it particularly interesting um we're not going to smell every single one because there are eight of them and a few more on the way i think but what to tell you about this range as a whole um to go back a few minutes to then what i was saying about dries van noten those Dries van Noten scents, and I did a video about them a few, couple of weeks ago, I think, they're all fine. Um, they they all use uh, decent enough, good quality materials. They're all well composed. They all uh, the, the, they all they all present a, a certain sort of um, decorousness and elegance, but they're not particularly earth shattering or bold. They don't reinvent the scented wheel, and you really could say the same about these. Um, they are mostly, you know, we're, we're talking generally here, they're mostly elegant. And as I was smelling them, I was also reminded them, or I was I was also reminded of the Chanel video the other day where I was thinking, um, sorry, I've just seen one comment here. I was once friends with someone who layered like opium with Chanel number no. five. Do note my use of the word was. <laughs> wow. Black opium with Chanel number no. five. I daren't ask what that smelled like. Anyway, I was reminded of my video on Chanel, in which I, the recent video, the top five, 10 Chanel perfumes, in which I was trying to think what it was that makes Chanel perfumes, Chanel perfumes. And 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 we decided, I think, collectively, that there was a sort of haute couture, top button, done up type quality, which is, um, which, 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 you, which is a description that you could apply to these as well. Um, so which is it that, that, that sort of, encapsulates uh, this aesthetic the best. I think I would go for Andompte, not because I think it's the best one, but, but because I think it, it it conveys this idea that I'm trying to convey the best. Now, I've made a note of who the different perfumers for these ones are. And this one apparently, uh, the perfumer for this one apparently was Olivier Cresp. So let us spray first of all. Kat says, I smelt maybe four of the range, can't remember which exactly, but Enflamme was one of them, wanted to love it, but it kind of fell short. Enflamme um, is an amber, in case anybody's interested, and it's a perfectly decent amber without, I think, doing anything that we haven't smelt from other ambers before. It's kind of trying to do that Serge Lutin's Ombre Sultan thing, but it's much more toned down. A lot of these are quite toned down. I think they're trying to be restrained and elegant, which is fine. So Andante, which I believe means sort of untamed uh, or un unconquered, savage. Um, Eric says, I wonder whether we should even expect interesting from mainstream brands these days. Even niche seems rote sometimes. I think we always, always hope for and expect the best, right? You know that whole line of expect nothing and you won't be disappointed. I think we should do the opposite in perfume. I think we should always go in with an open mind and think, yeah, this is going to be amazing. And if it's not, never mind, then the next one might be. So what I'm getting here is a very, very, very pleasant, very, very gentle, not too sweet uh, citrus note. 
which I can see from the notes here under my nose is meant to be Mandarin. And then also an equally pleasant and equally gentle and equally restrained and decorous and elegant wood note. And then I look at the notes uh, and it says that this contains oud essence. And I think, okay, if this contains oud, it is the most well-behaved oud I have come across for a long time. And this is why I was reminded of the video we did on Dries van Noten, because if you remember, there was one perfume from that range called, I think, Rosa Carnivora, which wasn't in the least bit carnivorous. And this, this untamed savage thing is about as untamed as, you know, the Andrex puppy. <laughs> it's, although actually, in February, that's not a very good example because the Andrex puppy probably is quite untamed. Well, yeah, <laughs> let's think of some sort of, you know, really, really biddable, friendly pussycat, uh, some kitten. Um, it's, it's, it's really nice, you know, if you were to smell it. It reminds me a little bit of Dior's Oud Rosewood, although I much prefer that because at least that's got some character, at least that's got some oomph. Um, and this just, you know, on a heart rate monitor, this would just kind of be going dip, dip. So it, it's alive, it is absolutely alive. But if you were to go into wherever they stock this and the sales assistant said to you, now this is the Oud, I don't think you, the likes of you and I, would be expecting this. Um, the olfactive story says the whole collection is not challenging, easily wearable and elegant. Absolutely. And maybe that, you know, that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, but maybe it just means that for the likes of us uh, who, you know, watch this channel and read my blog where we're always looking for the next innovative, interesting thing, I guess this isn't going to be it. Um, let me just label this because it is worth smelling a few of the other ones. Uh, now, where I think the style, so if we if we go to the one that I think is the weakest, where the style doesn't quite work is in, in, in which one was it? Because I've, I've handwritten some notes as well to just make sure that, there we go. Uh, sans merci, sans merci. So I suppose that means merciless, without mercy. There you go. This one is by Fabrice Pellegrin, a perfumer whose work I, um, I'm always interested to smell. But I think here, the the the, the well-behaved quality does isn't quite convincing. So this is meant to be vetiver and Davana. Um, but yeah, I, th I think I think this just sort of tips over a little bit too much into. Um, the, in, into the vulgar, which, which which just somehow doesn't 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 fit with these. Um, so as as I said in my note here, at least the the, the sillage and 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 the 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 the, the room filling quality is larger here, but it 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 does start getting quite rough and harsh, um, and a little bit off putting. I mean, the, as I'm smelling it now, the opening is softer than I remember it, but it does get it does get rougher as it goes along. So that's one end of the scale, I think. But at the other end, <clears throat> so merci would translate more like ungrateful, I believe, says Mr. Rasp. Ah, okay, okay, so yes, sorry, my, my French is not great. But at the other end of the spectrum, we have got, which one was it? Because the names don't really tell you what they are. Another one, which is a sans something, also by Fabrice Pellegrin, sans, sans artifice. Um, now, this is a tea scent. And if you can imagine that, you can probably imagine that the, that kind of sheer, restrained, elegant um, quality would work well with a tea note. And sure enough, it does. I think this is probably one of the most successful ones of these eight that I've tried. Yeah, this is uh, very, very quiet. Um, really, really doesn't draw a huge amount of attention to itself. And yet all of the notes are there. And it and it reminds me of um, the, the much, 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 much missed Dior um, Escal à Pondicherry, that beautiful cardamom tea scent that they did a few years ago. Um, it, it's definitely got that feel to it. There is something quite naturalistic about the tea note as well, which is interesting, seeing as the, the, the scent is called Sans Artifice. 
what else did I write about it here? I, I did say that it's a nice T note, but maybe the whole thing is a touch monodimensional, which 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 is an accusation that you could aim at, at the entire range. Um, but then I think maybe T does lend itself to a certain inscrutability. There's a kind of difficult to fathom quality in this one that that that, that works. I, you know, I, I think as, as somebody said, I think I think the the, the chats, the, the the comments already gone. Um, there are certain genres of perfumery that will lend themselves better to this sort of style. Um, but yeah, as as far as T notes go, this doesn't have that saline, musky fakeness that seems to blight so many tea scents. And um, also, it doesn't immediately remind you of things like the Bulgari tea compositions. So I was quite taken with this one. And if we're talking personal, personal favourites, although I suppose this was, this was always going to be like a personal favourite, it's another Fabrice Pellegrin. It's the one called uh, Garçon Monquet, which I was told is the French way of saying tomboy. I'm not sure how politically correct that is as a name now. So there you go. Somebody can tell me if that's wrong, if I'm right or wrong about that. Um, I guess this one was always going to be a little bit of an easy sell for me because this is uh, a leathery Osmanthus perfume. Again, shades of what we were talking about with the Dries van Noten scents a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so yeah, the notes say that it's Osmanthus Absolute and leather from grass. Yeah, okay. Um, your translation is correct, says Holly Bond, and so does all factor stories. Right? I, I was—I mean, I didn't know that. I was told that it basically is a, the French way of saying tomboy. Again, nicely done. Um, but as far as leather Osmanthus scents go, I personally would want to wear something with more oomph, with a, with a much greater sillage. Um, the leather in this one is really soft, says Olfactive Stories, y yes. And if that is the aesthetic that you're going to go for, they have generally pulled it off well, I think. Um, and I would, I guess, um, that the range is so far doing okay, otherwise they wouldn't be releasing any more. Let's just spend a couple of minutes looking to see if the press release, which I haven't read yet, sheds light on the thinking behind it. Um, for Hubert de Givenchy, couture was synonymous with avant-garde lines, distinctive fabrics, and a perfect fit. But more than anything, it had to have a touch of soul, a strength of character that heightens the allure. More than just clothing, the house's founder always created new identities through couture, strong-willed personalities. Oh dear, I think I can see where this press release is going. Exciting and inspiring styles which have been given a new olfactory interpretation in La Collection Particulière. This daring range, don't say it. Don't, don't try to make daring your selling point if it isn't, anyway. Uh, features eight gender-neutral fragrances, each built around an unusual pairing of ingredients. There's really not much that's unusual in, for instance, Narcissus and orange, tea and ginger, you know, vanilla and tobacco. These are the pairings, right? Osmanthus and leather. Um, somebody just mentioned trouble fait, and the, that, at least on paper, is interesting because it's meant to mi mix figs with uh, roasted sesame. But I'm not sure if the execution is quite on the nose there. Uh, unusual pairing of ingredients which interact and contrast with each other in a totally unexpected way. No. To create unique olfactory identities. Each original composition leaves a distinctive trail with a cure spirit which is glorified Aww. by a ninth fragrance, Accord Particulière de Givenchy, a signature scent designed to intensify the personalities of the other fragrances. It leaves a lasting impression and plays with layers to showcase different textures. A nod to Hubert de, Hubert de Givenchy's first collection, Les Separables, created in 1952, which featured pieces that could be worn in any combination. Yes, apparently, my, my couture knowledge is not great, as you can tell, uh, apparently he, he was the first designer to feature um, separates that you could combine. Um, 
the answer to your question, Woozy, is yes, it is a press pack, I believe. You have, this is a quote, you have style and personality, accentuate them, and if you live with a fragrance, keep it because it's a part of you, the couturier said. This is the motto behind the new fragrance collection, which showcases every personality. And then it goes on to describe the different scents, which we don't necessarily need to do now. So, okay, I, I, I don't think that is their USP. I think their USP is, 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 is a kind of restrained elegance. Um, but yeah, interesting. Daring? No, I wouldn't have thought so. So there we are. I would say, if you happen to walk past them in a shop, definitely worth smelling. But if I manage to get my hands on the latest ones, I will come back here and do a video on them as soon as possible, because I will be fascinated to see which direction have they, they've been taken in. Has somebody at Givenchy thought, okay, guys, we need to kind of, um, we need to boost these up. We need to, we need to give these a, a bit more sort of chest thumping action, or have they, have they kept with that restrained feel? So until then, thank you very much for watching. And for those of you who are sticking around for the lives, we'll be back in a couple of minutes with something brand new from Hermes. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.